Shalom, all oh, praise to how about me out shy? Double line to the apostles GMS. My name is Amnav Ala coming at you with another lesson. And this lesson, not sure what I'm going to entitle it, but you can see the title of this article here. This is from the WSWS website, World Socialist website. Okay? This article was written by Patrick Martin, April 13, 2017. It says, U.S. claims of Syrian nerve gas attack, the anatomy of a lie. Now, as we understand, in um, recent times, recent months, or rather, the past few weeks, if I get the past month, there's been this big thing about Syria and its gas attack. Now, let's get down to the nitty-gritty. Nitty I'm going to read this whole article, okay? I'm going to try to make this thing at least within 25 minutes, but I'm going to get right to it, okay? We're going to dispel this lie through the spirit of how about Shemel Shah. The claims by the U.S. government that the Syrian government carried out a chemical weapons attack on the town of Khan Sekun in central uh, Idlib province on April 4th have been backed by a week of non-stop media propaganda as well as uncritical support across the official political spectrum for the missile strike ordered by President Trump against the Syrian base. The charges against the Syrian government are absurd and unbelievable. The campaign mounted by the Trump administration, the, the intelligence agencies, the Pentagon, and the Democratic Party demonstrates complete contempt for the intelligence of the people and in the belief that they can lie without impunity or without punishment. Okay? Because they, but because nothing they say will be alleged by the servile American media. So they believe that they can lie to the American public without impunity, without punishment at all, because nothing that they say can be challenged by the servile American media. But yet the American media is servile. It's in control by the United States government. And I'll probably do that on another show. No lie is too great. If the U.S. intelligence agencies declare tomorrow that Putin was responsible for an outbreak of tornadoes or a hurricane striking the U.S. Gulf Coast by means of a secret Russian program to alter the weather, their claims will be presented as the gospel truth by NBC, CBS, ABC, CNN, and Fox. And that is a fact. The New York Times, and that shows you right there that the American people are fools. They're stupid. They actually believe, if they really put it out there, people will believe it. It says in Fox, well, the New York Times will publish a four-page investigative report complete with maps and charts provided by the CIA. When a policeman shoots down a working-class youth, it takes months, sometimes years, to complete the investigation. In the case of the Syrian events, it requires only minutes for the U.S. government to affix blame in three days to carry out the punishment, firing 59 Tomahawk cruise missiles at a Syrian base. In analyzing crime, there are three factors to investigate, motive, means, and opportunity. In relation to the nerve gas attack in Khan Sekun, Neither the Russians or the Syrians had any reason to carry out the attack. So the Russians nor the Syrians had any reason to carry out this so-called this, this, uh, nerve gas attack on Khan Sekun. The Assad regime had nothing to gain from the use of nerve gas on a town that was not a significant military target. What did the Assad regime have to gain? Okay, of, an, of a nerve gas attack on a town that wasn't a significant military target. What did the Assad regime have to gain? Moreover, carrying out such an attack would inevitably provoke U.S. military retaliation, something that Assad on the brink of complete victory, on the brink of complete victory in the protracted civil war, would hardly want to risk. So Assad would not want to risk um, um, United States military intervention by causing nerve gas attacks upon the people of Khan Sekun. Why would he Why would he risk that, knowing that it would bring about the United States intervention? Now let's read on. It says, the Syrian rebels, the Syrian rebels and the U.S. government, on the contrary, had motive means and opportunity. The rebels would view any loss of life as a small price to pay to bring about U.S. intervention in the civil war, which they are losing. Uh, they, have stock, they have stockpiled the nerve gas and have shown before in the staged attack on Ghouta in 2013, which killed many more people, a willingness and ability to carry out such a provocation. Just as importantly, the rebels and the CIA sponsors had opportunity, according to a detailed sir, according to a detailed analysis of the Kansekun attack on the respected U.S. physicist and missile expert Theodore Postol, emeritus, e e emeritus professor at MIT. The physical evidence strongly suggested that, that the delivery system for the nerve gas was a mortar shell placed on the ground, not a bomb dropped from a warplane. That means that the attack that means the attack was almost certainly carried about by those who controlled the ground around Khan Sekun, the rebel forces linked to Al Qaeda, not the Assad regime. Let's go to the book of Job's 15 verse 35. 
Job 15 verse 35. They conceive mischief and bring forth vanity, and their belly prepare deceit. Now that word there for belly in the Hebrew is baton. It says, and their belly prepare deceit. Oh, and that word um, baton means like um, mental faculties. I'm not going to go to it due to the interest of time. But it says, they conceive mischief and bring forth vanity, and their belly prepare deceit. And that's their belly preparing, preparing deceit right then and there. Okay? They're trying to say, oh no, it was the Versailles regime. But information that's shown that it was something that was released from the ground. Therefore, meaning it had to have been whoever controlled the ground, which was the rebels, linked to Al-Qaeda. Okay? Not the Assad regime. But by blaming the Assad regime, which the Assad regime, which the Al-Qaeda, all these rebels, are all working for the United States government. But if you blame the Assad regime for it, if you blame the Assad regime for it, then therefore it's justified for you to attack Assad and take down the regime, which therefore justifies um, which would therefore justify the United States military intervention if you could blame it on Assad. Okay? Let's keep going. Postal's analysis is in reply to the four-page document issued Tuesday by the National Security Council, the White House body that coordinates U.S. foreign and military policy purporting to prove the, the Syrian government's responsibility for the alleged sarin gas attack. The American media described the NSC or National Security Council document as an unusually detailed and factual account, making use of U.S. intelligence material that was declassified for that purpose. The Washington Post said the United States government was unveiling intelligence discrediting Russia's attempts to, to shield its ally, Syrian President Bashar al-Assad, from blame in last week's deadly chemical attack. So the Washington Post was saying the government was unveiling intelligence to discredit Russia's attempts to shield its ally, right? It said the Post went on to characterize the declassified things as part of a coordinate as a part of a coordinated broadside against Russia that was supplemented by new detail of what U.S. officials believe they know about the chemical weapon strike on Khan Sekun, offered by White House officials who who briefed the, the press on the on the document. The New York Times said the document contains declassified United States intelligence on the attack and a rebuttal of Moscow's claim that insurgents released the gas to frame the Syrian government. So the New York Times, the Post, the Washington Post. All against um Russia, okay. They're all against Russia. They're all against um against um the Assad regime, okay. They all trying to say no, no, no. You know, um we're gonna we're, this is intelligence to re, to to rebuttal the statement of Mossad's claim that this that the insurgents unleashed the gas to frame the Syrian government. That's not true. In other words, that's what they're saying now. There were similar reports in the Wall Street Journal, the Los Angeles Times, and the television and cable news networks. All of them presenting the intelligence agency accounts as unchallengeable un un facts. So the U.S. intelligence, this NSC document by the National Security Council, that's that's uh, supposed to be a, 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 a detailed factual account. Notice the Los Angeles Times, the Wall Street Journal, New York Times, the Post, the Washington, you know, all of these these um different media outlets, these different papers and television and cable news networks are all in on the two. Because they're all working for the United States government. They're all trying to. They're all working together to justify the takedown of the uh, to justify the takedown of the Assad regime. Think about that. What, what do you think that Bohemian Grove is all about? These top, these top um business owners, these billionaires, millionaires, they go there together and they discuss what they're gonna do for the world. And these are some things that they, that they discuss. That's why the United States government got all this help coming on all sides. Let's read a little a little bit more. Then we're gonna go into the next scripture. It says, these media reports are not only de demonstrably false, they are absurd. Any serious examination of the NSC document reveals it to be a series of bare assertions without any supporting evidence. The White House document closely re resembles the assessment issued by the U.S. intelligence community. The 17 agencies that comprise the massive apparatus of spying, political provocation, and assassination for American imperialism on alleged Russian interference in the 2016 U.S. presidential election, it is filled with phrases like the United States is confident. We have confidence in our assessment. We assess. Our information indicates it is clear, and so on. In other words, this is the U.S. government speaking. Trust us. There's one reference to signals intelligence without any elaboration. This is followed by the declaration standard in all official statements citing information allegedly supplied by the spy agencies. We cannot publicly release all available intelligence on this attack due to the need to protect sources and methods, once again, trust us. The NSC report made the first attempt by the U.S. government to attribute a motive to the alleged Syrian gas attack, claiming we assessed that Damascus launched this chemical attack in response to an opposition offensive in northern Hamad province that threatened key infrastructure, 
senior regime military leaders were probably involved in planning the attack. That's what they're saying. So I'm going to read this and then go down to the next scripture. Go to the next scripture. No evidence is cited to back these bare assertions, which raise obvious qu obvious questions. Why should the Syrian government suddenly resort to sarin gas in a town of no obvious military significance, when it did not use nerve gas and was never accused of doing so during the critical battle of the, battle of the past year in Aleppo? Government forces reconquered the, the rebel-held portions of that city, the country's largest population and business center before the war, and a bloody struggle conducted without the use of, of chemical weapons. So what are they, why are they saying this? Why did they re suddenly result to certain gas attacks in the obvious uh, in the town with no m obvious military significance when they didn't use um, gas or no was accused of, use, of using gas in, in the past year in Aleppo? Psalms chapter fifty two verse one. Why boastest Why boastest thou thyself in mischief, O mighty man? The goodness of the Most High endures continually. Thy tongue devises mischief like a sharp razor. Working deceitfully. That's Esau's tongue devising mischief, like a sharp razor. Okay, because if we just prove, if we just read what we just read about how why would they use nerve, use nerve gas in a town with no obvious military significance when they didn't use it in a critical battle in Aleppo in the past year, and you trying to accuse them of doing it, it's a goddamn lie. They're making it up. Their tongue devising mischiefs. Okay, that's that, that's what these crackers is doing. That's what Esau is doing. So go white man, right? Thy tongue deviseth mischiefs, like a sharp razor worketh deceitfully. Thou lovest evil more than good, and lie rather than to speak righteousness. Salah. And that's Esau, man. That is Esau right there. Thou lovest all devouring words, O thou deceitful tongue. These are devouring words, and, these, and, this, and this is an example of a deceitful, deceitful tongue. Using different newspapers, television networks, as well as cable networks, and various media outlets in order to, um, in order to push these lies out there, okay? That's what Esau is doing, because Esau the so called white man is the devil. Now let's keep going with what we had before. Okay, um, right here. Uh, government forces reconquered the rebel held portions of that city. The I read that part already. I'll read it anyway if I didn't. The country's largest population and business center before the Civil War, and a bloody struggle conducted without the use of chemical weapons. How much longer we got left? Not that much. Okay, um, um, even when the forces of President Bashar al-Assad were under attack in his home province at, La at Latakia, where the, pop where the local population from Alawati religious minority, which is which is his main base of support, faced the threat of extermination, if the Sunni Islamists were victorious, they did not resort resort to chemical weapons to beat back the rebel offensive. See that? The New York Times sought to address this problem by citing senior White House officials speaking on the condition of an anonymity to discuss the declassified intelligence report. Okay? These officials asserted that the Syrian government, under pressure from opposition forces, under pressure, um, under pressure um, from opposition forces, Around the country and lacking enough groups, enough troops to respond, use illegal ner nerve agent sarin or the sarin gas, as they call it, sarin gas tax, to target rebels who were threatening government-held territory. And this word here, anom uh, um, anonymity, it means the condition of being anom anonymous, lack of outstanding individual or unusual features. It says these officials asserted that the Syrian government, under pressure from opposition forces around the country and lacking enough troops to respond. You see, oh, see, the Syrian government was under pressure from these opposition forces around the country, and they didn't have enough troops to respond. Therefore, they used the lethal nerve agent sarin to target the rebels who were threatening government-held territory. Goddamn liars. This account makes even less sense than the NSC report, since the alleged nerve gas attack did not target rebels who were threatening government-held territory, but civilians in a town in rebel territory. What are they saying? Oh, see, they're killing the civilians. What are they saying that? So how you gonna say they was targeting the rebels when you just said... That they, when they just was saying that, that, that it, but when the um, when the um, when the when the attack targeted civilians, see now you're tripping up up in their own in their own lies. Now you're tripping up in their own lies, and we brought and we brought that out earlier about how um, they can they um they they can they believe that they can lie with impunity, and there was someone else that said that um, they just making stuff up, you know, they're making stuff up, then they gotta go back and make something else up. I don't know where it was, but that's but that's in there, okay. That's in there. Now let's keep going. Where are we at now? Um, this is uh, baby, one second. Um, we're right here. Okay, it says um, 